In this video, we'll discuss the principles of cryptography. Now, the goal here is for Alice to communicate securely with Bob. So what Alice wants to do is to send some plain text message M to Bob. But if Alice sends this message as is to Bob, what can happen is Trudy might intercept this plain text message and she would be able to understand what Alice is sending to Bob. So Alice's goal is to communicate securely with Bob in such a manner that Trudy cannot understand what she is sending to Bob. To do this, what Alice does is she takes her plain text message and she would convert it to some cipher text, send it over the channel, and once Bob receives his cipher text, what Bob would do is Bob would regenerate the plain text from this cipher text. Even if Trudy is able to intercept this cipher text, Trudy will not be able to get the plain text message that Alice sent to Bob. So this is what cryptography would help Alice achieve. So to do that, what does Alice need? Alice needs an encryption algorithm at her end and an encryption key, which is denoted by K subscript A in this slide. What Alice does is Alice uses the encryption algorithm and her key to generate a cipher text, which we denote as K subscript A with M within parentheses. This cipher text is sent over the channel and once Bob receives this cipher text, Bob uses a decryption key that is KB and a decryption algorithm and, is, and by using both of these together, Bob is, Bob is able to generate the plain text. So basically what the operations that happen are, Alice first uses her encryption algorithm and her key KA on the plain text M. This is what generates the ciphertext KAM. The ciphertext once uh, is received by Bob, Bob applies the key KB and the decryption algorithm to regenerate the plain text M. The goal is, is to make sure that even though Trudy intercepts the ciphertext KAM, she cannot apply any kind of key to decrypt the original message M. As long as the key KB is safe with Bob, Trudy will not be able to understand what Alice sent Bob. So let's try to understand this with an example. The simplest uh, cryptographic example is symmetric key cryptography. In symmetric key cryptography, what we assume is that both Alice and Bob share the same key denoted by KS in this example. Of course, a big question that arises is how do Bob and Alice agree upon a key value? We'll not discuss this in this video and we'll defer this discussion to a later video. Now, both Alice and Bob have the same key KS. So what Alice does is she uses this key KS and the encryption algorithm on the plain text message M and what ciphertext she generates is K subscript S with M within parentheses. When that ciphertext is received by Bob, Bob once again uses the same key KS to generate the plain text M again. So what's an example of this kind of cryptography? Uh, an example is a key in the key is knowing substitution pattern in a monoalphabetic substitution cipher. So let's look at this example. In a substitution cipher, what we do is we substitute one thing for another. In a monoalphabetic substitution cipher, what is done is each letter is substituted for another. So let's look at the plain text here. So here A is substituted by M, B is substituted by N, C is substituted by V, and so on and so forth. So there's a one-to-one on, one one mapping between the each alphabet in the plain text and the cipher text. This is the encryption key. The mapping of 26 letters to another set of 26 letters is the encryption key. And this is what is shared between both Alice and Bob. So let's assume that Alice wants to send this plain text message, Bob, I love you, Alice. The corresponding cipher text using this key would be as shown in the slide. For example, if we just consider Bob, you see that the mapping between the plain text and the cipher text for B is N, for O it's K, and for B it's N again. So it is going to be N K N. And by using the same logic, you could uh, construct the cipher text for this plain text, and you can verify that what we have in the slide is correct. A more sophisticated encryption approach would be to use N substitution ciphers, M1, M2, all the way up to MN. So what do I mean? 
So let's assume that you have four such substitution ciphers, that is n equal to 4, m1, m2, m3, and m4, and then you could use a cyclical pattern in which you are going to use these ciphers. For example, the cyclical pattern could be m1, m3, m4, m2, sorry, m4, m3, m2, and repeat this process again. So how would um, you convert a plain text to a cipher text using this approach? Say you want to convert the plain text dog to a cipher text. So what you would do is you would convert D using M1, O using M3, and G using M4. You see, the pattern is M1, M3, M4, M3, M2. So here we only have three alphabets. So the first one is converted using the cipher M1, the second is converted using M3, and the third is converted using the cipher M4. So the encryption key here is that are the N substitution ciphers and the cyclical pattern that is going to be used. With this, we'll conclude this lecture.